Hi everybody, this is Karen Branch. I'm the Executive Director at the Montgomery County Youth Service Bureau. And I wanted to share a little bit with you today about what we do at the Youth Service Bureau, as well as say thank you sincerely from the bottom of our hearts for all the support that Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church provides for us. Uh, you all help us be able to continue to serve the youth in our community and make a difference in what the future of our community looks like. Because that's our goal, is to help kids be able to grow into responsible adults who become contributing parts of the community. Uh, we want them to be responsible and successful, whatever that means for them, and we want them to be able to move forward in their lives in a positive way. Uh, so our overall goal is delinquency prevention. We want to prevent kids from getting in trouble, and so we do that through a number of ways, because uh, just like any complex problem, like substance use, there is never one easy solution. There are often a number of solutions because everybody requires something different. So we do it through mentoring, through an alternative school for credit recovery, through the Court Appointed Special Advocates Program, through Inspire, through Nourish, Youth as Resources, Reindeer, uh, Teen Court, all of these things work towards helping kids either overcome the risk factors in their lives or help them build protective factors that help them be able to overcome those challenges. Uh, we serve nearly or just over 4,000 kids each year through all of our programs, um, providing safety education to all elementary school students, advocating for kids who are victims of abuse and neglect, and working with kids kids who need that additional guidance and support that our staff and our programs can provide. Uh, we know that we are making a huge impact, not just by the numbers and the statistics, but by the kids who come to us and say, you made a difference in my life. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't been there. Um, the letters that the teacher gets, that our staff get, the comments that kids make that they know they can trust them and depend upon them. That's what you're investing in when you invest in the Youth Service Bureau. You're investing in kids having those supportive relationships that really make a difference in their life. Uh, you know, I could go on and on, and anyone who knows me knows that's true, but I just wanted to give you a little idea of what your support of the Youth Service Bureau means to kids. Uh, I'm always happy to share more if anybody is interested, but I thank you for your time and attention and appreciate again tremendously the support that Wabash Avenue Presbyterian provides to us. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to the service of virtual Christian worship. My name is Reverend John Van Nuys. I'm the pastor at Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church, and on behalf of our church family, our church board, the session, our deacons, and everyone in our congregation, we wanna welcome you to this virtual worship service. The scriptures say that where two or more are gathered, God is with us, and indeed we are gathered, and indeed God is with us. Although we are separated spatially due to the pandemic, we are nonetheless together spiritually because Christ is present through the power and gift and grace of the Holy Spirit. Know you are welcome, and let us now prepare our hearts to come before the Lord in worship. Please join me in our call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so those who God has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and from the south. Let all God's people say, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Our opening hymn will be sung by our choir director, Jenny Feitzwick. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
Gracious God, I come before Thee. Come Thou also unto me, where we find Thee. confession. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us ask God to forgive us. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Lord God, only you are holy. Yet we imagine that we are righteous, excusing our own faults while pointing out those of others. We are quick to lay burdens upon our neighbors, but slow to help them with their own. We take credit and give blame. In spite of the grace you have shown us, we are slow to show mercy. Forgive us, O God, and wash us clean, that we may serve you with thanksgiving and joy. Amen. Let us now continue to confess our sins in silence. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Jesus Christ. And Christ did not come to condemn us, but to save us. Christ was born and lived for us. He died and was raised for us. Christ now lives for us and reigns for us and prays for us. The scriptures tell us that anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. Behold, our old lives have already passed away and our new life in Christ has come. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Holy God, open the scriptures to us as your word is read and proclaimed that we may be your people and follow you and give you praise all of our days. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the Hebrew scriptures from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was on an archeological dig in Israel, we took a breather uh, midway through, and we took a break and went sightseeing. And one of the places we went to was a place called Belvoir. It was and is a crusader era castle in Galilee. The castle overlooks the Jordan River Valley, and through that valley comes the main road over which conquerors have come for centuries 
long before Belvoir was built over a thousand years ago. Over that road first came the Egyptians, then the Assyrians, then the Babylonians, then the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Sanassans, the Muslims, the Crusaders, the Mongols, the Ottomans, the Jordanians, and the Israelis. Looking down on that road and on all that history, I thought of all the blood that had been spilled. I thought about all the suffering and about all the sheer inhumane purposelessness of it all. I remember looking down and wondering, is this how God feels looking down on the dark, unconquerable chaos of our world today? Genesis says that God doesn't feel that way. And Genesis says that God doesn't act that way. God doesn't look down in despair, feeling overmatched. What's more, in the beginning, God wasn't up there. God was down here, interacting with the dark, formless void, shaping it from chaos to cosmos, bringing form and purpose into being, bringing creation to life. The Ruah of God was at work. The Hebrew word Ruah means spirit, wind, breath. The spirit of God, the wind of God, the breath of God swept over the waters. What God was doing can be translated many ways. God's spirit, God's wind, God's breath was sweeping, moving, hovering, brooding. In a passage in Deuteronomy, the same word is used to describe how God cared for the Hebrews during their tough trek in the wilderness. God cares for them, that text says, and cares for us. Like a mother eagle that gently alights upon her nest, hovering maternally over her young, spreading out her wings in protecting, nurturing love. That's what God was doing when God's spirit, wind, breath, when it swept, moved, hovered, and brooded over the dark chaos. God was nurturing goodness out of nothingness so that you and me and all of creation could breathe and live and love. This is not ancient history. This is what God is doing today. This is not fancy, irrelevant poetry to be kept in a book. This is practical, essential truth on which to base and live your life. In this truth, we are told, and by this grace, we know that God is in the mix. God trumps chaos. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, God continues to hover, sweep, move, and brood over creation to shape it and us for good. That's good to know, especially during a pandemic with social unrest and economic instability and with an important, divisive, exhausting election just two days away. We may just be at peak chaos right now. It certainly feels this way. 50%, one out of every two American adults reports that they're either anxious or depressed or lapsing into an addiction, an eating disorder, or other chaotic crud because you, me, they, we, we just can't take it anymore. The news is too grim. The future looks too dark. Our nation is too divided. 
chaos, uncertainty, and despair reign supreme. That's why we get together every seven days to remember that, no, that just isn't true. As a matter of fact, God is the one who reigns supreme. God is not an apathetic absentee landlord. God breathes, coaxes, hovers over creation like a potter over the clay, passionately shaping beauty out of a blob, taking the mess we've made and reworking it until what is good and right and true prevails. We know that this power is at work right now because Jesus Christ is risen today. Easter means that God cannot be stopped. Therefore, God's going to do what God's going to do. The Holy Spirit continues to be poured out upon us and our world to bring about what is good. We're sort of like raw vegetables in a slow cooker. All we know is that we've been sliced to pieces, thrown into cold water, and left in the dark. Humanly, that's often all that we can perceive. But with faith, we can trust that there is a master chef, there is a wise grandma who's at work, who knows exactly what they're doing, and just how to bring us to perfection. When the morning comes, after we've simmered all night, something's changed. We're not exactly sure when, but sometime in the middle of the darkness, a benign force beyond ourselves has somehow transformed us for good. A time in county lockup changes us, making us eager to really make things right. A wounding breaks our heart. But as we put the pieces of our heart back together, we surprisingly discover that our suffering has enlarged our heart, making it and us more humble and forgiving and compassionate. A family or a nation going through tough times finally learns how to work together. It happens, maybe, it's happening right now. Don't rule out the one who reigns supreme over creation, who broods over creation, who continues to shape dark, hopeless nothingness into hopeful, shining, new beginnings. After all, that's what happened on Easter, and that's what continues today. So, Hang in there. Hold on to hope. And know that God's Genesis work is not going to stop until all of creation reflects God's glory, goodness, and grace. Keep acting with God to shape things for good. As we do, the chaotic darkness will pass. God will say, let there be light and there shall be. Let us pray. Holy, gracious, and loving God, we come before you this day uh, in troubled times. We ask, Lord, for you to pour out your grace upon our world, upon our nation and communities, and upon our hearts. Give us the eyes of faith and give us the heart of that trusts so that we can see where you are at work beneath and beyond the headlines and give us courage and strength and the willingness to work with you to bring about goodness in our relationships and community and in your world. Oh Lord, we continue to pray for our world in the midst of pandemic. We pray that you will bless and protect all frontline healthcare workers and essential workers, that you will protect them as they do the work that has to be done to keep all of us well. 
We pray your blessing upon all of our leaders. We ask you to guide our President Donald, our Governor Eric, and our Mayor Todd, that you will continue to help them shape things for good to lead us all out of this pandemic alive. Oh Lord, we are approaching the election and we would ask that you would guide our choices, that you would bring the right men and women uh, into leadership to guide our communities, to work together to advance the common good and help us all to live together and work together in peace. Lord, we ask your blessings upon our community, upon our schools, upon all who teach and learn. We ask, O oh God, your grace for the ministries beyond our congregation housed in our facility, for child and family counseling, for the Montessori School of Crawfordsville, for the fish clothing pantry, and for the recovery groups that meet every day. We pray, O oh God, that you will pour out your spirit upon them, that you will enable their good work to continue, and that you will free everyone, healing us all, and bringing us into your freedom, light, and life. Oh God, we pray for all who are ill. We ask for you to pour out your healing spirit upon them. We ask, O oh Lord, for you to be with all who grieve. We ask that you would walk with them and grant them your peace. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who are forgotten and alone, for those who are hungry and hurting, we pray for those who has no one to pray for them. We ask, O oh Lord, for you to extend them your love through our care so that everyone is included in your grace. We pray for individuals today remembering your servants, Alger and Patricia, Kevin and Laura, Lily's friend, Dakota, David and Sheridan, Bill's friend, John, Jim, and Rob and their family as they grieve the death of Jim's brother, Larry. Jim and Becky, Jim and Virginia, Becky and Nanette and Nancy and Doug as Nancy heals from her successful foot surgery. We ask your grace upon Roger as his, whose cancer has returned. We ask you to be with Betty and Dick, with Marty, with Bill and Linda, with Betty and Peg, and with Alan. And, O oh Lord, we would ask that you would now receive and fully answer these our silent prayers. O oh God, we thank you for receiving us and for receiving our prayers and Lord, receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Help us to trust you, to follow you, and love you. Unite us now in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is sung by our choir director, Jenny Fight Swick. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is He. Troubled is to 
tender word I hear, and resting on His goodness, I lose my doubts and fears, though by the path He leadeth, but one step Receive now the charge and the benediction. I remind us all to remember when we're feeling sliced up in cold water in the dark that something else is going on. Someone else is brooding over us, is hovering over us, is breathing upon us, nurturing out of dark nothingness, bright shining new beginnings for us individually, for our community, our nation, and our world. Let us trust that and let's work with that. For as we do, God's kingdom shall come. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>